Welcome back to Double Zero Garage. In this video, I'm going to have a look at everything that's wrong with my 1995 Ford Mondeo. Now, it's a two litre gear, 16 valve. I've owned it for around about two and a half months now, and I've been using it daily ever since I put it on the road. And in that time, there's one or two things that I found that are wrong with the car that need addressing. So, without further ado, let's get out and let's have a look at those. Now, it's a little bit windy out here today, so hopefully, you'll still be able to hear us. But starting with the interior of the car. On the interior, there's actually not a lot wrong. The seats are all great. There's no rips in the seats. There's no tears in the seats. The headlining is absolutely amazing. I still don't know if the sunroof works. I'm not quite brave enough to try that yet. We'll leave that for a while longer. One of the things it does need on the interior, though, is this. I still haven't managed to find one of those. That's still broken, so that needs doing. And then if we go around to the back of the car, Inside the tailgate, both struts have given up the ghost, so there's actually nothing holding the tailgate up. And of course, these uh, these strings here, both the ends of those are still broken. I still need to get those. And then I've also noticed recently on the back door, there is a little bit of rust that's starting to show its face. So that's starting to come through down there. Obviously that needs looking at. We'll get that looked at as soon as we can. Still got those ridiculous wheels on. Now on the passenger side, on the door, when you open the driver's door, the handle stays up. The door does work, but the handle stays up. So you've got to give the handle a bit of a thump when you're going to shut the door. There's also what looks like a bit of lacquer peel on the top of the door. You can actually feel that. So lacquer peel on the top of the door. We'll have to have a look at that and see if we can get that looked at, get that sorted out as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see underneath the car or not. Can we see under there? There's a new exhaust, absolutely brand new exhaust on there. I'm not quite sure that it's been fitted very well or not, or if it's just we're having the stupid wheels on the car, those low profile tyres. But whilst you're driving around in the car, if there's more than one person in the car, every time you go over a speed ramp, that exhaust does grind out on the speed ramp. A little bit so that's something that hopefully will get put right when i change the wheels because i'm definitely changing those wheels everything else seems to be perfectly okay apart from the headlights and the indicators at the front now the fun part is for some reason somebody's put a red bulb in the passenger side indicator at the front which i don't know why they would do that but it shows up as a, as a pink light when the indicator is on have a look at this so on the front of the car when the indicator is on now it kind of shows up orange, the further back you go from it, the redder it gets, so I do need to sort that out because obviously in the UK you can't have a red light showing at the front of the car. Now the only other thing, if I just turn the indicators off, we'll put the headlights on. When the headlights are on at night, this is what happens. On the driver's side of the car, the indicator comes on, or at least a bulb comes on, an orange bulb comes on in there, and you don't get that. On the passenger side of the car. Now as you can see the indicator still works so I don't know if that's a fault in the electrics or if there's a bulb in there, two bulbs in there which it looks like it could be but uh, that needs investigating as well. Hopefully you can hear me okay today. It is so windy out here today. It's unbelievable how windy it is so hopefully the microphone's kicked in and you can hear me all right. If not I apologize for the wind noise. Now under the bonnet everything seems to be exactly as it should be. I've checked all the fluids. All the fluids are perfectly okay. The only thing that's not as it should be under here is this bonnet stay the actual clip for it there the actual clip there is broken but nothing to worry about everything under here looks good works fine no major signs of damage or anything like that so we're okay with everything under the bonnet now there does appear to be a bit of a crack in the windscreen there a bit of a chip in the windscreen I hadn't noticed that before uh, previously, only just really recently noticed that one. And also on this door rubber bit, that's, uh, that's all a bit split there. But it's still in place perfectly, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Other than that though, and those few things, at the moment, on the surface of it all, that does appear to be everything that's wrong with the car. So uh, I've got to sort out the indicator on the front, well both indicators, I've got to sort out why one's coming on as some kind of cruising light or, uh, or side light with the headlights when they come on at night and stick an orange bulb in the one on the passenger side. Now when I got the car, 
the last MOT, it passed its MOT last June, so the MOT is good until this June. Uh, it did have one advisory on there, just the one, and that was for a noisy wheel bearing on the passenger side of the car. <laughs> it wasn't just noisy uh, bringing the car home, it was absolutely howling. That's been done now, uh, I had both of them done, so if one was gone I figured the other one wouldn't be far behind it. So I had both front bearings done. The, uh, the other thing that I want to get done as soon as I can really is the timing belt in the engine. Uh, the timer belt was last changed about 12 years ago. Now it's only done 23,000 to 21, 23,000 since then, but it is about 12 years since the timing belt was changed. Now personally, I'm not going to trust that timing belt for very much longer, so I'll be getting the car in, get that timing belt done, uh, I don't have the the locking pins or anything to lock the engine up well. I do the belt myself, so uh, I'll see if I can get that timing belt done. Desperately need to get these wheels off, though, that's on it, and, uh, and get some decent wheels on there. And the only other thing that I didn't show in the video that you're already aware of, if you watch your previous videos, is that the third brake light in the spoiler at the back, that's got a few bulbs in it that are no longer working. And you should be able to see across there just how windy it is today. A lovely view, though. It's a shame it's uh, freezing cold and so windy. Lovely view of the sea. So I need to get either a replacement third brake light or take it out and see if you can change the bulbs in for individually. And I'll get some bulbs and get that working again. Other than that though, everything seems good. Uh, it's It starts well on cold. It does take quite a while to demist on a cold morning. I've noticed that. Um, all the windows, well the, certainly the front windscreen certainly seems to be missable a lot in the morning. So I don't know if there's any dampness in the car, moisture getting in somewhere overnight while it's sitting or if it's just plain and simply the time of year um that could be what it is but we'll definitely have a find out eventually i suppose what's wrong with that one i'm still not brave enough to open that sunroof though electric sunroofs this time of year no i'm not going to open it i'll leave it for now so everything's wrong in the car is really nothing major nothing to worry about really pleased with the car and it drives really well it does pull to the left ever so slightly not sure if i've mentioned that previously or not however it's not an issue with the car it's the passenger front wheel does seem to have a slow puncture now i'm not too concerned about that and i'm certainly not going to do anything to fix it i'll just keep pumping air into it for now because i'm changing the wheels so if it whether it needs a new tire or there is just a slow puncture because there's a leak on the rim or a leak through the valve i'm not going to worry about that the air it does hold air for two or three days once it's got air in it so i'll just keep pumping it up and, uh, and leave it like that until i get some different wheels for it or some better wheels on than the uh, the stupid re ridiculous ones that are on there at the minute now i think i have mentioned previously that um the front of the car has ford focus sd 170 brake conversion on it i don't know why that was done and the wheels that are on there i believe there are 17 inch wheel yeah there are 17 inch wheels that's on there now if i can i'd like to go back to 15 inch wheels so from what I was told by the person that I got the car off, the only wheels that will fit on the front of it are um, Mondeo SI wheels. If you know that to be true, if that's the case, let us know in the comments below. If you just comment below and let us know, because I've got no idea if there's any reason for only SI wheels fitting. I would have thought the only difference between Mondeo models and uh, in the trim levels of models was the style of the wheels or the hubcaps on the wheels if they came with them. And I don't want to go out and buy a set of wheels only to find that they don't fit. Uh, ideally, I'd be looking for a set of wheels if uh, the owner or the seller of the wheels would let me go down, try one on the front of the car, see if it fits, make sure it spins with the caliper the way it is and doesn't rub on any of the, any of the bodywork or anything like that. So I'd rather do that if I can, but I'm definitely going to have to get some new wheels because these things are just horrible. Anyway, enough of the wheels. Now, the only other thing worth mentioning is that the driver's door doesn't unlock with the key. Uh, it is central locking. The central locking works on all the doors. And on the driver's side, you can lock the car from the driver's door, but you can't unlock the driver's, you can't unlock the car. None of the, nothing, none of the doors unlock. Uh, it does unlock from the passenger side of the car, thankfully, so it can get in. So the door lock is going to need uh, having a look at. But that's something I've had on previous Mondeos that I've owned. It was the same principle there. The driver's door lock was playing up. So I'll put a new lock on that one, and that's sort of the problem out. Hopefully, I don't have to put a new lock on this one. Not that it's difficult, but I'd rather just see if I can fix it. Maybe it's just a loose connection or somewhere like that, but I'll get the door cut off at some point in the summer. For now, not a bit of a problem. I'll just wander around the car. It's actually, it works out really well because with us having to unlock the car from the passenger side, while I'm unlocking the car, I can check that wheel to see if it's still got air in it. So it works well. So a little niggly thing, nothing to worry about, a little bit of an inconvenience, even if you can call it an inconvenience. It's, it is what it is. So I'm definitely not going to worry about the fact that it'll only unlock from the passenger side. As I say, it locks on the driver's side, so that's fine for now. It'll work for me. There's absolutely no warning lights on the dashboard whatsoever. 
it just starts, it runs, it does what it should do. After all, it is a Mondeo. That's what they're known for. Now, I did get a fair amount of history of the car. I got a load of history and receipts on work that previous owners have done to the car, things they've had repaired on it, things they've had replaced on it, things they've had serviced on it. However, there is no actual service history on the car. Now, as far as I can gather, the last time it was serviced would be about be about 50, 60,000 miles ago, I think it was. So it's definitely up for a service. So we'll change the fluids, we'll change the plugs, have a good look around it, put some filters in it and all that, and we'll get all that done once the weather starts warming up. It's a bit cold at the minute for uh, for the old uh, the old fingers in, uh, in, use, in grabbing anything and doing anything. But once the weather warms up a little bit, which shouldn't be too long now, we are getting better days. We're getting a little bit longer nights now. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit longer at night. So it won't be too long before I can get into it and give it a full service as well as all the rest of the cars on the fleet. So, oh, I have also found out that in the boot, there's what looks like a couple of amps, a couple of amplifiers. Uh, there seems to be two of them for some reason. They're bottled in behind the back lights in the boot. Now, I don't know if that's a Monday or thing. Would it have come with that? Has it been added in? It does have an aftermarket radio in. It's a tape player, which is great because <laughs> I don't have any tapes. Uh, I may have to get some tapes or change the radio, but the radio works absolutely fine. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that because of copyright, but the radio does work. Believe me, it works absolutely fine. Um, there is, as I say, there's what appears to be two amplifiers in the boot. Um, I don't know if they're standard to these cars. I don't think they are. It doesn't look as though they are, uh, but they do seem to have been fitted rather well, and uh, they're not in the way and they're not rubbing on anything there's no wires hanging or dragging or anything like that so uh, let me know again in the comments below if that's a normal thing and if there should be there or if it's an aftermarket thing but apart from that everything's fine it's a good looking car it's a good driving car the heater works which is absolutely fantastic also the fuel gauge works which i'm really pleased with because the amount of cars i've had with no heaters and no fuel gauges working and i've had to run them through the winter it can be an absolute nightmare if it's freezing cold and you don't know how much fuel you've got in the car but fortunately all the gauges work everything on the dash works and does as i should do apart from that headlamp leveler button that seems to be missing that i mentioned in, uh, in one of the previous videos that i did on this one if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see some more stuff on the Mondeo and all the other cars that I've got, and share it out there as well across all social medias. The more you like it, the more you comment on it, the further out the video gets pushed by YouTube, and the better off it'll be for me because it'll help the channel grow. If you're still watching and you've enjoyed it so far, congratulations, thank you so much for watching all the video. Comment below, just put the, comment, the word Mondeo in the comments below if you've watched all the way through to this, end, this part of the video. For now though, it's freezing cold out here. It's really windy. I'm going to head home. I'm going to get a coffee. I'll stop off and get an orange bulb so I can get that indicator sorted so I'm no longer showing a red light at the front of the car. Thanks for watching this one, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.